Block. We want to also welcome the rest of the Congress women and the rest of the delegation. Let's put our hands together. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, any moment from now, His Excellency, the President, will be here. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Vice President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, the Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, the Fountain of Honor, the Supreme Head of State. 
Retired Brigadier Dr. Julius Madabio, accompanied by Excellency Mrs. Fatima Madabio. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, the Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, the Fountain of Honor, the Supreme Head of State. Retired Brigadier Julius Madabio. Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, with your permission, we want to call this program to order. I want to invite Alahaji Dr. Alpha Khan, Minister of State Northwest, for a Muslim prayer. When the Lord Jesus Christ invited his disciples for the last supper, the table was empty. And they asked him, Lord, what shall we eat? And he spread his hands. Say, oh Lord, send us manna from the heaven so that we can eat and be filled. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much. Now call on Ambassador Anes Domaina for a Christian prayer.
in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we thank you for this great evening. God, you are almighty. We know you are here. And we do appreciate you, God. And we thank you for this wonderful gathering. Thank you because, Lord Jesus, you are the only God we know and we trust. We thank you for the peace. Thank you for love. Thank you for care. And thank you, God, because we know that the Holy Spirit is here. This and all other formation passes we ask through your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Ambassador. On this note, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, tonight, the moderator for this program is not less a person but the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Therefore, I humbly request Madam Minister Deputy to come forward, Mamadi Gobe Kamara. President Mohammed Julia Jalo, Madam First Lady, Ministers and Deputy Ministers of Government, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, honorable members of Parliament, our distinguished guests led by the Chairman and by partisan members of the House of Foreign Affairs of the U.S. Congress, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my pleasure to welcome beautiful First Lady have been gracious enough to pay, pay host to dinner for all of us tonight. To our visiting guests, I know you've had quite an eventful time since you arrived yesterday in Sierra Leone to begin your review of how U.S. funded programs and initiatives. All agree with me that ending the day with a sumptuous dinner and having some opportunity to interact and foster new partnerships, or better still, deepen interactions, is a good way to end the day. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner will be served very soon, but before then, let us quickly listen to a few statements. It is our culture in our culture, the party, we would ask the host to welcome you. By so doing, you are assured that your being in their vicinity is approved and is highly appreciated. So to give us that nod of approval tonight, I'd like to invite our First Lady, Madam Fatima Madabio, for her welcome address. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. First lady comes up to welcome each and every one of us here tonight. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, retired Brigadier Julius Malabio, my dearest husband. I feel so now we'll talk with me. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Vice President, the Chairman of the SLPP, the Honorable PC Gregory Mates. Today, I'm sorry, sir, you're not a congressman. You are PC Gregory Links of I'll give you Bond Island. <laughs> All Congress members here, honorable ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity on behalf of His Excellency, the President, retired Brigadier Julius Malibio, and on behalf of the people of Sierra Leone and the government of 
Cyrilion, welcome you to the people's house. This is a house that belongs to the people, so you're all welcome to the people's house for a state dinner in honor of your visit here in Sierra Leone. We hope and pray that you have an experience that you take with you that will be nothing but positive for our nation and that your experience will lead you to come back to our beautiful country because I believe we have so much to show you. But because of your short stay here, we'll not be able to show you everything. But what I can assure you today, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that you will have our cuisines from different languages. When you talk about cassava and soup, that is His Excellency's favorite. They are shabu people, they like cassava. Now when you talk about cow milk, that is our Honorable Vice President. <laughs> They are full of people, they drink a lot of cow milk. Now when you talk about peanut butter, now you are talking about me, because I'm a mandinka. We eat peanut butter a lot, we even eat it with bread. Now, the other cuisines we have, we have a mixture of European, Chinese, and African cuisine. We have Acheke from Ivory Coast, we have Fufu from Nigeria, all of that we have here today to celebrate you guys so you will enjoy your stay and then when you go you remember us and you'll come again i have a bunch of gifts for all the delegations that are here but because of time we will not be calling every one of you 21 people will not call you on the stage to give to you but I'll ask my staff to take them round and your name are on the gifts. Please accept that as our hospitality from the State House of the State Lodge to you all. And we welcome you to Sierra Leone and we wish you a wonderful stay. And when you go back, may Allah take you safe. At this juncture, I want to say thank you to Ambassador Y for bringing all these wonderful guests to our country for believing in the leadership of His Excellency retired Brigadier Julius Madabu, for pioneering in bringing wonderful women of African descent, and of course our new farmer chief who is here with us as one of us. We have been inspired this afternoon, and we will continue to follow your step as African women who believe in nothing but the new changes because we believe change you need to come to Africa. And that change should be one that the women should lead. That change should be one that we have a president like retired Brigadier Julius Madabio who believes in women empowerment. We are hoping that all the men of Africa will now be a he or she leaders. So we will work together in partnership. So we will work together and stand together hand in hand, not as the women at the back for the women that work hand in hand with their partners. I want to say thank you so very much for coming. Please enjoy our meal and our hospitality. And like I said, this is the people's house. If you're Sierra Leonean, you know this is your house. You're all very welcome. Thank you so very much. First lady, ladies and gentlemen, now you can relax. Have the host has assured us that you're very welcome to this vicinity. Thank you very much. Next up to make a statement is the Foreign Minister, Sierra Leone, Professor David Francis. Please put your hands together as I welcome Professor David Francis. Thank you. 
Brigadier General Retired Davis Madadieu, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Your Excellency Dr. Mohammed Jalla, Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Your Excellency Madam Fatima Madadieu, First Lady of the Republic of Sierra Leone.
that offers two inspirational messages to the rest of the world. First, Sierra Leone offers a message of resilience that despite all our difficulties, we are still standing and making progress. And second, Sierra Leone offers a message of hope that yes, it can be done. So we offer hope to countries like Mali, Guinea, Burkina Faso, Sudan, Yemen, Myanmar, the protracted Arab Israeli conflict, and in fact, Afghanistan. We offer hope that yes, it can be done, and the opportunity to learn from Sierra Leone. So that is why today, Sierra Leone is firmly on the global stage as a credible, highly respected country of standing in the international community of states. Today, we have a president, His Excellency Dr. Gilles Madabio, who is the only African head of state who chairs two African Union high level mandated committees. <laughs> president Gilles serves as the chair and coordinator of the African Union Committee of 10 and the C10 for the reform of the United Nations Security Council. President Gil is leading the continent's global agenda to reform the United Nations Security Council. President Gil, at the recent African Union 35th Summit of Heads of State and Government, was endorsed as the new chairperson of the African Union Peer Review Mechanism, promoting good governance and democratic consolidation in Africa. And make no mistake, you do not get to be appointed as C10 coordinator and APR chair person if you do not have salt on your head. Your Excellency, against this background of recent military coups in the West African sub region, today Sierra Leone, as I said, is family on the global stage. What we have is that we have President Liu, who has a particular competence and leadership experience that is not found anywhere in the world today. Because as military head of state in 1996, he organized democratic elections under international community supervision, restored constitutional order, handed over power to a democratically elected government, and negotiated the exit of the military from civilian politics. Today, he is back a civilian, democratically elected president. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, President Bill is the only sitting head of state in the world today with this particular competences and expertise. We are therefore not surprised that military leadership in Mali, in Guinea, in Burkina Faso are now looking to President Bill's leadership and support to facilitate the restoration of democratic constitutional order in these countries. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I recall during my high level meeting with the US Deputy Secretary of State, Madam Wendy Shermer, in June 2021 in Washington, I informed her that Sierra Leone stands ready to play regional leadership for peace, security, and stability. It is my hope that both the State Department and the Congressional Committee on Foreign Relations will take advantage of this unique opportunity to negotiate the exit of the military in civilian politics and to restore the, and to support the restoration of democratic constitutional order in West Africa. We need that type of leadership in Africa. Your Excellency, Sierra Leone is a small country in terms of size and population. Make no mistake, we are a big country in terms of global ambition to promote global peace and security. So Sierra Leone has therefore considered it important to make a meaningful contribution to the international system. And let me take this opportunity to inform especially our congressional delegation of Sierra Leone's bid for a seat in the United Nations Security Council for 2024-2025 in the non permanent tax group. This is global ambition. When Sierra Leone assumes were successful in its bid with elections in June 2023, Sierra Leone will 
played a critical role at the UN Security Council and the opportunity to serve as president of the UN Security Council to promote global peace right from this particular experience of challenges and the opportunities in Sierra Leone. So again, I seize this opportunity to, to solicit the support of the United States government through Congress. So to conclude, let me again thank His Excellency the President and Madam First Lady for the warm reception and the hospitality accorded to the U.S. Congressional Delegation since the arrival in Sierra Leone. Let me reaffirm government's commitment to working with the United States government on both bilateral and multilateral issues to ensure global peace and security. And to Congressman Gregory Mintz, since you have been crowned today as Brahman Chief, you have traced your ancestral lineage to Sierra Leone and the Mende Nation. I say to you, Mahim Gregory, Bua, this year, I thank you all. Francis, that very insightful statement, and I'm sure there's a lot that, that came out of that statement for not attempting to dilute what you have said. I just want to say a very big thank you to you and um, move on with the rest of the program for tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker will be introduced by our ambassador to the U.S., Ambassador Mustafa Wai, I'd like to invite him to come up and introduce the next speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as I welcome Serbian Ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Mustafa Wai. Mustafa Wise, my younger brother, he is here, but thank you so much. Um, the most distinguished president that I have ever had the pleasure of serving is Excellency Retired Brigadier Dr. Julius Madapu. You need to put your hands together to that great man. Dr. Trude Diallo, Vice President, another distinguished leader, our Chief Minister, uh, members of cabinet, of course, my own foreign affairs leader, Professor Francis, and my dear sister, who has really made this event he has put it, she has put this event up at the world stage. I'll give a round of applause to the honor of Madame Fatima Dio. He told me to be brief, so I'm going to be brief. Let me tell you how this thing came about. Sometimes people will say, oh, well, wait a minute, how do you bring all these people here? It was last year. March 2021, that I came here and had the unique opportunity to visit the president. And the president at the time said, I told him, your brother, your honorable Gregory Mintz at the time, is now the chairman of foreign affairs and the 199 year history of the United States Congress. He said, tell him to come home. We're going to bring him home. And true to form, those of you who always say, they said, talk and do. President Julius Madabio said, bring him home. And true to form, 
Dr. Madhavio has brought his brother, my Gregory Mix home. So, when the president gave that order to bring him home, I had two, I had three people that I went to. And it would be unfair of me to stand here to take all of this credit without you knowing. Mr. Mohammed Kosia, I hope you're around. And Mr. Abdul Densi. And of course, my brother, who was called early. Now, how do you introduce Greg? I don't have any notes. I met the chairman and the mine 35 years ago as a judge in Queens. He wasn't even thinking about running for public office. So I was living in Queens at the time. So he decided, I was in Rockaway, to summon seven people to his mother's basement. So I'm coming, I thought I was coming to eat food. He says, I want to run for assembly. Seven people started the career of, the political career of the Honorable Gregory Meeks. So he won the assembly. And he later on won Congress. Of course, at the time, People like us, they didn't have any enough, enough money, but we knew what we had to do. Today, when I got appointed, he was the first elected official on the planet to call me up and say, congratulations, Mr. Ambassador. After that event, he says, I want you to come to Congress. So I'm saying I'm coming to meet with him. He had his whole crew, members of the Congressional Black Caucus, on both sides of their eyes, Republicans and Democrats, introduced them to me. I even met one of his favorite people in the South, in Texas, who was willing to work with me. I, I don't think I have, uh, but you know, all of that. So I met. Democrats and Republicans through him. Even our first African elected to Congress, it was Honorable Greg Meeks that introduced me to her. So, this man said, and from day one, that you have had the civil rights revolution in America. So now, we need to have an economic revolution for people of color all over the world. So for me, he is a congressman. He is my name. But simply, he is my brother and best friend. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, the Honorable the chairman, the money, <laughs> to this stage to address you all. And let me also recognize all of the congressional delegations that came here to support him. Ladies and gentlemen, pick your hands together to welcome my brother and friend, the Mahe Gregory Weldon Meeks. lady of this great country, who I don't know if you all noticed, but as you were sitting here, you saw my
colleagues and the theme of what has been talking about the women of Sierra Leone. Well, first you saw my bride come out after becoming a PC. Looking beautiful and native garb. And then we're sitting here and I see walking down the steps all of my beautiful colleagues, stand up. All of the women and the spouses, I want them all to just look how beautiful, thanks to the first lady. It is my honor to be here with them, to the vice president, the prime minister, all of the ministers, the members of the parliament, and last by far not least, the people of Sierra Leone. It has been the honor of my life to have this cultural experience with my wife, Simone, who is the love of my life. And I'm going to be real brief, because I've talked a lot today, and it's been a lot emotional. But I will say this. I can remember going to school as a kid. And there was different people from different parts of the world there. And they all would give the experience of a, a cultural experience of their heritage. Even as a member of Congress, some of my colleagues said, oh, I'm going to go see my family or talk about their cultural history from Italy or Spain, or England, even some from parts of Central and South America. But I felt empty because I could not have that or share that same thing, that same feeling, because then I did not know. I knew I had African blood running through my veins, but I did not know where I came from. Because of the tragic and cruel reality of slavery. Taking my ancestors and others away from here. Taking away language, religion, and culture, and family. Separating us. The cruelty of slavery kept me from knowing and understanding who I am, where I came from, and the cultural experience of my people. But all along, you can feel it. You know, sometimes when you come to America, you can just visit one of our religious churches. Individuals who have been separated from this ocean, this ocean. But they can still feel the beat of the African drum and the rhythm of the culture. And so finally, Thanks to the science of DNA, I found my ancestry home, Sierra Leone. I began to learn the history and listen as I talked to His Excellency and know that we are brothers, Mende brothers. And so as I take my seat, here's my pledge. Honored to be here. Honored of the ceremony of becoming a PC. Honored. But as my chairwoman of the Congressional Black Caucus said, there's work to be done and we can do it. Ambassador, we're going to do exactly what you said. I have individuals coming to Sierra Leone in just three weeks about investing money right here. We're going to do it. We will do it. We will show and make Sierra Leone a shining example 
of leadership on the continent of Africa. And let me say to our U.S. Embassy, our Ambassador, our Chief Deputy, thank you. And one other group that has not received recognition. And I want to ask my staff on this CODEL to please rise. Everybody that has worked on putting this trip together, who works on the committee, these individuals working day and night and honestly in a very big and great way. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. My brothers and sisters, can we do this? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Can we do this? Yes. Can we do this? Let this great nation continue to rise and lead the way to a better place for the whole continent, led by the people of Syria and Oman. God bless you all. Thank you very much. I want to keep clapping. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for that very, very, very inspiring statement from the game. Well, as you've already heard from Ambassador Y, um, PC Mix is a, a Democrat who represents New York in the 105th Congress. He was elected in a special election to fill the vacancy following the resignation of Representative Floyd Flake. Mr. Mix, or PC Mix, is the chair of the Committee on Foreign Affairs in the 117th Congress. And today, he has traced his ancestry to Sierra Leone, Mr. Mix. I dare say you also are an ambassador of Sierra Leone. So please, as you go out there, go tell it on the mountains, over the hills, and everywhere that Sierra Leone is a country that is ready for business. Thank you very much for that wonderful statement. Um, we continue with more statements, ladies and gentlemen. Madam Vice President, Madam First Lady, Chief Minister, Cabinet Ministers, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker has dedicated his time and energy to changing the narrative of Sierra Leone, from that of war-torn, Ebola, mudslide, poverty, endemic corruption, etc. So one of development, accountability, and enduring democracy. His administration has introduced transformative policies and programs in the education, energy, agricultural, and health sectors. I dare say that most of these policy reforms and programs have started bearing good fruits and improving the lives of their unions. No wonder foreign investors and other international partners who used to have second thoughts about doing business in Sierra Leone are now coming back in droves. This time around, confident in the enabling environment and that resources channeled to Sierra Leone for development programs are utilized for their intended purposes. If this were not a dinner event where long speeches are normally not good for digestion, I would have gone ahead to read to you a long list of what's been achieved so far under this administration, led by His Excellency Brigadier Retired Julius Manaview. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding as I invite His Excellency Julius Manaview, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, to make a statement. <laughs> Honorable Paramount Chief Gregory Mix, or Mahi Mix, 
Honorable Amy Bera, Honorable Ihan Omar, Honorable Gert Bidi, Honorable J.K. Butterfield, Honorable Brenda L. Lawrence, Honorable Troy A. Carter, our distinguished spouses and visiting family members, hardworking staffers, ministers of government, honorable members of parliament, members of the diplomatic and consular corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm truly elated. On behalf of the Republic of Sri Lanka, to welcome each and every one of you here this evening to our humble home. Gregory Mix and Tim, I draw you this very sight of great pain and sorrow, the Ponds Island, where you relieved the pain of party the sorrow of being forcefully taken away, fallen to a distant land. But what they never took away from you and from us is our common humanity, our common ancestry, and our common genealogy. So we are back together. Therefore, I welcome you to this, to this land of rolling hills and forests, alluring sandy beaches and beautiful people you've not had the opportunity to meet much of them. This is the radium, your true home. In the last two years, we have welcomed home brothers and sisters from the, Ameri from the African diaspora. This is home for us. And this is home for you. And this will always be home away from home. You are sure. Welcome again to Sierra Leone. Welcome to the most peaceful. Welcome to the fourth most peaceful country in Africa. Welcome to one of the most tolerant nations in the world. Welcome to our democracy where we have abolished the death penalty. Permanently removed all criminal life laws. Slammed down on corruption. Made tremendous progress in ruling justice. Robustly fighting all forms of sexual and gender violence. Taking progressive steps to assure gender empowerment and women equality expanded access to justice and promoted and protected people's rights, invested in human capital development as a national priority, free quality education, quality and accessible health care, and food security. Welcome to the country where we believe confronting challenges from climate change, in, uh, climate change trafficking in persons, investing in science, and innovation to making institutions more attractive, among others, define a renewed spirit of purpose and nationhood. Again, I welcome you and every member of your delegation and our dear friends in the diplomatic and consular corps to this dinner. American small and diplomatic relations with Syria started off in the 1950s and has, has intensified ever since through bilateral and multilateral agreements America has contributed immensely to the socio-political and economic development of this nation whether through United States Agency for International Development the state the Peace Corps volunteers local NGOs government agencies religious organizations, or direct intervention in communities. America's footprint 
in areas of cooperation include food security, education, health care, access to justice, national and maritime security, heritage and cultural preservation, trade, investment, and more. We look forward to further broadening and deepening our relations. America has led by example, and America has also challenged us to be better. For three straight years, we have passed all critical indicators of the Millennium Corporation, Millennium Challenge Corporation scorecard for ruling just, justice, for the control of corruption, and for investing in people. We are now, we are now compact eligible and we have identified health and sanitation and access to energy as key constraints on our development. We recognize and appreciate America's global leadership in maintaining peace, security, and stability. Sierra Leone leads the Committee of 10 African Nations for the reform of the United Nations Security Council and chairs the African peer review mechanism. Sierra Leone has been unanimously endorsed for a non-permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council for 2024-2025. <laughs> we count on your support and we look forward to working with the United States of America in solving global challenges from climate change to pandemic and instability. We share America's undaunted resolve for promoting and protecting democracy, good governance, and human rights. America has been there for Syria, even when dark clouds gather over the horizon during the war. But I'm even more heartened by the commitment in your interview with Jude Devermont, the director of the African program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Surgery last year. Excuse me. You re echoed President Biden's policy shifts towards Africa in the usual eloquent Nikwe. You argue that your goal is to respect the United States relationship with Africa, building on shared trust and mutual respect. You stated that you would rather focus on, and I quote, shared challenges, expanding people-to-people -people relations and exchanges, building partnerships to increase youth participation in the digital workforce and championing a more robust presence across the continent, end of quote. You highlighted other possibilities of collaboration and cooperation on security, climate change, cultural heritage and preservation, promoting the creative industries, technical support to promote and facilitate trade, working with African stakeholders to imagine and construct a functional and fair post-Agoa world where Africa is an active participant. Develop a youth workforce grounded in digital and STEM education to support diaspora investment in Africa and on good governance among others. Sweden looks forward to working very closely on crafting a mutually beneficial relationship that supports the goals of that foreign policy reset. Paramount Chief Mix, I'm truly touched by a thoughtfulness in making this trip. and to bring such illustrious sons back. I'm humbled by your kind spiritedness, moved by the commitment, and inspired by your leadership and passion. So, from the depth of our heart, and on behalf of the Republic of Sierra Leone, I welcome you home, Paramount Chief. A Parliament chief never stays away from his people and his kingdom. This is your kingdom. 
We are your people. As you go away, remember to come back soon. Welcome and thank you, and have a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So our visiting guests, I have the First Lady Alia encourage you to partake of our local dishes. Please endeavor to do that. And I'm sure you may thank me later. Thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen, and have a good evening.
Judge.